Also, this application data layer, it's used for creating the test case flow. So you guys can see here, I use different keywords to flow through my application. And the keywords are very common sense keywords. So for example, I open the home page, I open the register page, I registered the new user and then I close the browser. Think of it, if you were going to do this manually, this is the exact flow that you would do manually. All I did was convert the manual test steps into scripts, into code, and now it can run automatically anytime I want. Finally, the application data layer allows for external configuration of the script without needing to access the driver script. So what does this mean? It means that if I want to change this flow and before closing the browser, for example, I wanted to show you guys a sample failure. I can easily just insert this function here and now I have a whole new flow. Now let's keep in mind that I only gave you guys two sample test cases. If this was a much bigger test case and between opening the home page and closing the browser, you wanted to do a lot more steps and you had those functions created, all you have to do is just insert those functions into the Excel spreadsheet. And as long as they exist in your framework and in your function libraries, it will run. That's it. Anybody can do this. So you give it to a manual tester. They have a scenario, a new scenario that you don't have. How do they create the test case? They just copy and paste your keywords into a whole new test case ID and now they got a whole new test case. It's that easy. That's the beauty of automation frameworks is that once you guys as experts develop it, almost anybody can use it. So next layer. Oh, in fact, let's go take a look at our application data. So here is my application data. I call it mercurytours.xls. Okay? This is what it looks like. There is a test cases sheet that controls all of my test cases. I only have four, two of which are dummy. I just made them up just to have them. And two I actually created. I created some code so that it runs. Okay? And it's very simple. You just keep adding on and as long as you have a unique test case ID, you can navigate from sheet to sheet. And if we wanted more data here, you know, we can have registration data here. And if we wanted to start doing like first name and so on and so forth. Now it would be very simple to just use this data for whatever I want. I can use this data to run through my application, entering first name and last names, addresses, and so on and so forth. Okay? And in this test cases sheet, another very important thing is this execute column. It's very simple because the framework, what it does in the most basic terms is it goes into the spreadsheet and it looks for this column, okay? When it comes to this column, it will come over here to the execute column and check to see if this flag is a Y. If it is, it captures this test case ID. So now we have test case 001. The next step, once it's captured test case ID, it will come to the test steps sheet. And in the test step sheet, the first thing it does is run from the beginning to the end of the spreadsheet. And it looks for the same test case ID. If the test case ID matches, which it does in this case, all it's going to do is come over here to the keyword, get this keyword, go to the driver script, find the keyword and execute the function that's associated with that keyword. That's it. It's so simple. It takes a little bit of time to understand, but once you understand the simple logic, that's what a framework is. Let's go through another example. 
So now we executed this keyword. So what happens next? Well, this is a for loop. So the next thing it does is it goes to the next row. And at this row, it checks the test case ID. The test case ID matches. So then again, it grabs the next keyword, executes it, goes to the next row, matches again, executes that, another match. Then it comes here. Test case 004. This is not a match. So all it's going to do is it's going to exit, and it's going to come back to the test cases sheet. Once it's come back to the test cases sheet, it's going to go down to the next row and going to look at the next flag right here, which is a no. If it's a no, the script doesn't need to do anything. It will just continue. It will come down here. It's a no. Continue again. Come down to four. Now this flag is a Y. So what do we do? We go back to the test step sheet and we execute this. One, two, three. Test case executed. That's it. That's the test data, guys. And for my framework, I like to keep my test data here in the input parameter column. So for example, all of my input parameters that I pass here are described right here with the parameter description. Now this parameter description is just the English version of these parameters, right? So for example, if a manual tester wanted to fill out their own parameters, they need to know what data to enter. And what data to enter is right here. First name, last name, phone, email, address, so on and so forth. Okay? So that's the input parameter column. Why would I use this as opposed to data? Well, for example, this is very good if you want to do a smoke test because you don't need to data drive a smoke test, right? So instead of filling out a different spreadsheet and creating a different framework for your smoke test, you can have a more simple one just by using this outlay for the framework, okay? So what else? is about this data layer is we have the results. So for example, if I was to do cross-browser testing, I can have a result for Firefox and Internet Explorer. It will report on both. It will run through and report everything here, pass or fail, and then it will report everything here in the results. And same thing with outputs. Outputs are just sometimes functions will want to output something that you may want to convey to somebody else like management or a manual tester and so oh I don't have any outputs here right now I forgot but I'll, once we show you the final run you guys will see what I'm talking about so that's the data layer let's continue environmental variables now, many of you may not be familiar with this, but this is another type of file. I recommend an XML. It's right here. And what you can store there is things like global variables, URLs, usernames, and so on. This is good when you want to spread the data amongst multiple applications. So for example, imagine I have some URL and many any modules are testing this URL. All I have to do is put it in one place in an XML and everybody can access it. If that URL changes, guys, and it does change, trust me, through a development cycle, your URL may change, I don't know, 10, 20 times. So if you have to hard code it somewhere in your script, you have to go and change it in every single script that you create. But if you just link it to this one location in your XML, then everybody gets that change. So let me show you what this XML looks like. It's very simple. It looks like this in this kind of a format where I may store a Mercury Tours URL and its value. I store the file name of the config file which is this and then I output the username and the password from my first script that I ran. So when I created the username and password when I registered the new user, I outputted those values here. Why? Because now another script, for example, a login script, may come along 
and it can easily pick up these values and utilize them to make sure that the newly registered user can log in. And if somebody else wanted to do something else, they just go in and grab these usernames and passwords and just utilize it for whatever purposes they want. That is the beauty of the XML, is that it can put all these things in one location and then it being reflected in all of the scripts or all of the function libraries, wherever you use it. And it's very easy to modify. That's the beauty. Next layer. We have the test execution report. This is the output layer, guys. All of this is the output layer, and it consists of the test execution report and the test analysis data. I'll explain that after. So the test execution report is just as it sounds. It conveys the results of the automation run. So what that means is you have a run, let's say late at night, and 3 a.m., and some report is sent out to the development team. They get that report, and this is the test execution report. It tells them, hey, 50 test cases passed, two failed. And then they can look to see why did those two test cases fail. Was it a smoke test and they were not supposed to fail? Well, that means that the development broke something. Or does it mean that somewhere along the lines the flow of the application has changed and now your script is broken? And so that means you need to go and modify your script to reflect the new application flow. If that is the test execution report. It can reflect many other things, but usually it's a collection of test cases and test steps and those will receive pass or fail results. Um, I also like to convey screenshots. So for example, what I would do is I would create a test execution report late at night. It would send out an email, and along with that email, if any test cases failed, I will attach screenshots of the failures so that at 3 a.m. in the morning, if development wants to do some work and they see that stuff has failed, they can look at the screenshots and they don't have to bother me. They don't have to wake me up late at night and say, hey, why did this fail? Because I, don't, I want to be sleeping. So, you know, you want to make it as easy as possible for yourself. That's the whole beauty of automation. You make everything automatic so that pretty much then you just sit back and enjoy your life and make a lot of money. And there are many types of test execution reports. QC has its own. If you execute through QC, you guys may know QTP even has a test execution report. So you guys can do it how you want. But let me show you what I have. So this is what happens when I have an execution. You guys can see here that when I ran the script for you guys, it generated a unique run folder. Inside of this run folder, I have my results. And you guys can see that I have two failures, which were designated, which were planned. So let me show you what happened with this file.